Can you pinpoint the exact location of this electron with 100% certainty? It could be here, it could be here, or it could be anywhere. can be explained with the famous Copenhagen interpretation. It considers two realms. The first is the classical macroscopic realm of measuring instruments governed by Newton's laws and the microscopic quantum realm of atoms and other small things governed by the Schrodinger's equation. The Copenhagen interpretation states that wave function doesn't have a physical nature that is instead comprised of pure possibility. So to truly understand Copenhagen interpretation, we'd first have to understand what wave function is. What is wave functioning. It is a mathematical description of quantum objects that takes the form of a wave. Different kinds of waves can represent different probabilities. By squaring the wave function, we get probability amplitude or wave probability. Imagine Albert Einstein enjoying himself on a sunny day when he finds himself at crossroads. The first leads to immortality, the second to immeasurable knowledge, and the third to true love. Let's say we assign probabilities to each of the paths he takes. The probability he takes the second path is the highest, so he's most likely found in this path. But here our analogy breaks down. If we were to assume that Albert Einstein was an electron and that he follows the laws of quantum physics, then he would be in all places at the same time, meaning he does not have a definite position. The act of not knowing where an electron is allows its probability to be spread out over a large space, kind of like a wave. We say that the electron is in a state of superposition, just like Stroginger's cat experiment in which the cat is both dead and alive before opening the box. But when you open the box and observe, the cat is no longer in superposition, but in one definite state, just like my grandmother's cat, alive. The same way when an electron is measured or observed, it collapses onto a particle with a single location, much like our beloved scientist who is found to be 100% at a single point and 0% everywhere else. It's not real, but just a set of abstract numbers that can be assigned to different paths, much like the mathematical description of wave function. Till now, we've discussed probability and wave function. Another aspect of Copenhagen interpretation is wave-particle duality. Let's start with the double slit experiment. In the famous double slit experiment, electrons are beamed towards a surface that has two slits cut into it. As electrons are conventional particles, the pattern on the rear surface would just appear to be in the same shape and size of the slits. But instead, they bounce off each other like ripples in water, creating a tiger strip pattern on the surface. But why are these particles behaving like waves? What's even more mind-boggling is that when physicists try to put a detector to see which slit the electron went through, the striped interference pattern disappears and two parallel marks appear. It's as if the electrons knew they were being spied on and started behaving like themselves again. To put it simply, whenever you try to see a probability wave, the act of observation thwarts your attempt. So now we know how to locate an electron. It's never with 100% certainty. As Niels Bohr rightly said, if quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, then you haven't understood it yet.